If a brand new player to Mythic Keys started out today, how far do you think they can make it in just three weeks? If they had to learn everything on their own, nobody there to hold their hand, do you think it would be possible for somebody to achieve Keystone Hero in just three weeks? Or is the amount of gatekeeping in Mythic Plus just too much for them to handle? Well, that's what I wanted to prove today as I set out on my journey from becoming a complete noob in Mythic Plus to becoming a Keystone Hero in as little as three weeks. I'm partnering with Skillcapped WoW to make this guide because not too long ago, they published a video saying it was possible for a new player to go from hitting level 70 to timing Mythic 15s in just one month. And while I'm not a brand new WoW player, I have never done Mythic Keys before, and honestly, I hardly even know what a Mythic 15 is. In fact, a few weeks ago, I learned that this is a vault, and this place lets you craft gear now, I guess? So while I do know how to move my camera and what a rotation is, I'm told I'm going to have to do a lot more than that if I want to clear high keys. To make this even more difficult, I'm going to be playing a class I have literally no experience on, Beast Mastery Hunter. I'm told Hunters are one of the squishiest classes in the game for Mythic Plus, so I'm not particularly excited to see how bad things can get. But considering I play an Ellie Shaman in Classic, it's not exactly like I'm used to having defensives anyway. Along with this, I will be following all of the guides at Skillcapped and documenting my process so that you too can join along and see exactly how I've been improving and climbing the Mythic Ladder. Even just to start out though, where does a new player begin? After I hit level 70, it felt like I was hit with a sea of things I had to catch up on. According to the Complete Beginner's Guide that was published on Skillcapped a few months ago, the first step to success is preparation, which honestly is exactly where it feels like I need to start. My build right now was just what they gave me when I logged in, and my UI is, well, super basic. In fact, the only thing I did set up was my transmog. Don't I look sick? I suppose it is possible, if you're watching this video, that you're even more new to the game than I am, in which case I guess I get to be the teacher here for a second. If you're a giga noob, then you'll probably need to set up keybinds as well so that you're not clicking everything on your bars. I'm sure there's dozens of reasons why clicking stuff on your bars isn't great. It's inaccurate, it forces you to look at your bars more. You can only click on one ability at a time, and that means that you can't be clicking other things then. The list goes on and on. If you're not even sure what to keybind, here's what worked for me for the longest time. I use the 1 through 6 buttons for key abilities in my rotation, and then shift 1 through 6 for utility related stuff. Along with this, I would also do Control 1 through 6 and Alt 1 through 6 for both offensives and defensive cooldowns. These worked really well for a while, but something that I realized from watching a lot of Skillcap videos was that with these keybinds, I'm still not using like half of my keyboard. That's why I ended up changing a ton of my keybinds to things like R, Q, F, C, V, Z, basically just everything around WASD. Another thing I noticed immediately when watching this video was that I had A and D bound to turn instead of strafe, so I immediately went and swapped those. I know from playing other games that if you have a bad setup, you're honestly just making things so much more difficult than they need to be, so I really wanted to be thorough with documenting my improvements that I made. By the end of this video, my setup is going to look completely different, so you're definitely going to want to stick around. In the beginner guide, it also lets me know that my defenses should be on easily accessible keybinds, so I put my Aspect of the Turtle on R, Exhilaration on E, and Survival of the Fittest on Shift E. For me, these feel really comfortable because they're directly next to my movement keys, so if I'm in a panic, I can quickly just press the button instinctively. I also put my interrupt on F because I watched another skillcap video in the past for PvP that said my interrupt should be on an easily accessible keybind without using a modifier so that I can press it as fast as possible. Just watching this video more has made me realize how much of an uphill battle this will be though, because now they're telling me I should be comfortable using mouse over and focus macros to interrupt as well. So after realizing I have no idea how to set up a mouse over macro and doing a little bit of googling, I was all ready to go with my keybinds. Now it's time for add-ons. I kid you not, this is what I would say to be the biggest barrier of entry for getting into retail. Every single time I think about playing this game, I just think of how annoying it's going to be to set up add-ons, so I just avoid it. I'm really hoping that Skillcapped has something that makes this process less annoying for me. Luckily, this Plater video on their Mythic Plus channel details how to exactly set up your nameplates step by step, so I definitely recommend checking that out. I was basically able to autopilot the whole time and barely had to do any thinking. Along with that, I was told to download DBM, Omni CD, and Weak Auras. The last one isn't super necessary, but I also got dominoes so I can move my bars around. This way, I could have everything in just one place on my screen, rather than having to look towards the right for additional action bars. My finished UI probably looks pretty gross to experienced players, but for me, this actually works really well. I tried to group up my abilities in a way I can remember them, so I grouped up my defensives, my offensives, my utility, and then of course my standard rotation so that it's easy to remember. I feel like this is a good place to start. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Is this horrible? Is this good? I have no idea. As far as preparation goes, the final key to the puzzle that I've been doing just passively is gearing up using the catch-up mechanics in the Emerald Dream. 
If you're watching this in the future and this content is irrelevant, I guess maybe next expansion or something, it does seem like WoW is pretty good at providing catch-up mechanics, so just refer to whatever is around if you're looking to gear up fast. With all that said, I'm being told the final thing I need to do in preparation is buy flasks and combat potions. Apparently health potions are really important in Mythic Plus, so I'll stock up on those and grab a few flasks. Did I mention I have no gold? This wasn't too big of a deal for grabbing potions, I did end up just getting the weaker ones, but I imagine I won't be buying any gear, at least not anytime soon. I didn't feel like it made sense for me to buy the uber expensive stuff right now since I'm going to be doing early your keys anyway, but once I'm doing more difficult stuff, I imagine it's going to be a lot more worth it for me to have the best consumables. Alright, so I've gone down the WoW checklist. I did my add-ons, I set up my UI, I got gear, I bought potions, I changed my talents, my character looks so cool, what else is there left to do? Oh yeah, I gotta learn how to play my class. Luckily at Skillcap, they have class-specific courses tailored towards all of the specs that helps you figure out the stuff that actually matters for your class. For Beast Mastery, actually they had two specific courses, one for basic fundamentals and another for advanced techniques. I watched the first one and it was really cool to me how rather than just telling me what my rotation is, they actually broke down mistakes that new BM hunters make and how to fix them. For example, this video very clearly tells me how to do an AoE opener and common mistakes that I might make that I should avoid. Funny enough, I was definitely making some of these mistakes, and it was actually really helpful to not only be told what to do, but also be told what not to do. There's also a ranged DPS course that I want to watch eventually that I know will give me a ton of information, since I just assume all ranged classes need to follow these same fundamentals. Site subscriptions also include both PvE and PvP content as well, so I'll definitely be taking a look at some of the courses for hunters on the PvP side eventually, just to see if there's anything else that can help me there. Alright though, I am finally all set up. Time to dip my toe into the water a bit. I want to do most of my progression alone, just finding groups from Group Finder, because otherwise it kind of defeats the purpose of the series. If I just queue with friends and get carried, it's not exactly going to be the most interesting, but being able to go solo through the process of finding groups and climbing up difficulty levels sounds a lot more intriguing. I started out by just testing a few normal dungeons and trying to get used to my new keybinds. Since our normal dungeon mechanics don't really mean a whole lot, you can kind of get away with anything, which lets you practice your rotation a bit more before really diving into anything serious. I personally was beginning to feel a bit of stress surrounding Mythic Plus, so I wanted to make sure that I was as prepared as possible before rolling into any keys. This video right here suggests that I do some research for each dungeon to get an idea of what the layout looks like and what effects can kill me. That's why I started the very next day by hopping into Discord with a bunch of friends who were playing and watching them all run a tall Dizard together. This was a really cool way for me to actually see the dungeon and prepare for it before really committing to my own run. After thinking about it, it does feel like I'm cheating a little bit, since I know that not all players will have access to these same resources. This is why I wanted to offer up another solution for players looking to learn dungeons beforehand. In one of Skillcap's videos, they told me that the add-on Mythic Dungeon Tools is a great way to see the season's dungeon layout and view the mechanics of each pole. For example, here's a recording of me going through Black Rook Hold. I just clicked on each mob, read their abilities, and then wrote down notes for how I should likely react to each one. While this was tedious to do, it also made me feel incredibly prepared for the dungeon, even more than just watching my friends. Enough talk though, let's finally run a dungeon. After browsing in the group finder, it didn't take me long to get invited to a 2 key for a tall Dazar. I could not be more prepared. It was my time to blast. As the timer counted down and the dungeon started, our tank took off. I'm going crazy, shooting arrows and stuff, looking all cool and all, but it didn't take me too long to realize our first issue. Dude, nobody has any idea where we're going, do we? So, it turns out I didn't really pay attention to the route that they took. I've got to say, Mythic 2s are absolutely hilarious. I was so worried about holding people back in my first dungeon, but I'm going to be honest, after watching all of these skillcap videos, researching my class, and setting up all my add-ons, I was way over-prepared. I literally was doing double the damage of everybody else in the dungeon. This was a good wake-up call as well, though, because I realized that even though I'm new, because I did all of this research, I'm also kind of the expert. This was clearly showcased when we got to the totem boss. I knew from watching my friends that all the totems needed to die at the same time, but apparently nobody else got the memo. Something I learned for playing Valorant at a high level is that in team games, it's not just enough for you to know what to do. If you really want to go anywhere, you also need to be able to help others in your group as well. This is why on the way back from our wipe, I tried to help assign people to each totem. It wasn't perfect, but we were able to do it right this time and take down the boss on our second attempt. The problem is though, for Mythic Keys, it's just not enough for us to kill the boss. We also have to do the dungeon during the designated time period to complete the challenge. And at this rate, it wasn't looking great. We had 17 minutes left to kill the last two bosses, which is more than enough time for a two key. But at the rate this was going, if we continue to struggle, it's possible that I wasn't going to time my first Mythic Plus. We couldn't let that happen though. As we progressed through the rest of the dungeon, although it wasn't the prettiest run, we were able to get her done and officially complete my very first Mythic Plus. 
I know to experienced players this sounds silly, but I actually gained a lot of confidence from this. I was so nervous to enter my first dungeon, but I realized very quickly it's not actually that scary. I've seen on Reddit before people having the same worry as me diving into Mythic Keys. There's just so much to learn, and it seems like there's a lot at stake when you add the timer. A lot of people just are super afraid to even try. I hope this can at least be a reference to those players that there's really nothing to be scared of. As for myself, I made a lot of improvements during this dungeon. I was focusing on applying my Hunter's Mark, and I had a few good defensive uses, and most importantly, I felt like I got comfortable enough with my rotation. There's still things I'm doing horribly wrong, but for now, it's nice to know that I've achieved the rank of good enough, and I'm feeling much less scared rolling into my next key. Over the course of the next week, my goal is just to do all of the dungeons on lower difficulties and learn the layout and boss fights for each one. My first key was a Black Rook 2, which was the dungeon I did my research on earlier. It didn't go great, but I guess that could have been expected since our healer literally couldn't find the dungeon. It seemed pretty obvious that I probably should have left this one. For what it's worth though, it wasn't even really his fault. The tank ended up rage quitting after we died to the stairs boss. Oh, and by the way, rebinding my E and Q key like Skillcap recommended earlier seemed to make this entire stairs gauntlet completely trivial. I ran this dungeon three times in a row and I didn't get hit by these boulders a single time. So if you're really struggling on this section yourself, definitely give this a shot. Over the course of the next few days, I continue to run different keys and just experience each dungeon. Everblooms, Thickets, Murzons, I'm really starting to feel like I'm getting the hang of things. Flap it up. Flap it up. <laughs> Flap it up. So cute. And so I'm going to say something that I know sounds crazy, but I genuinely believe this is the fastest way to get good at anything. I've ran around 40 keys at this moment. I know, I know, that probably sounds like a lot, but if you want to get good at something, you should do it a lot. I'm not great at WoW, but I coach Valorant for a living, and I can't tell you how many clients I've had that have asked to get coaching, but they've only played like 10 matches. You can only be given so much advice on stuff. Eventually, you're going to have to actually practice. It's just the honest truth for anything in life. I knew if I wanted to get good at keys, I'd have to play a lot. So I continued to slowly climb the ladder, and then as I got more and more comfortable with my class, I decided to watch the Advanced Peace Mastery course and the Range course over at Skillcap to just get a better idea of things I could be missing out on. Something that immediately started helping me was this video that called out my exhilaration usage. I actually rarely used exhilaration, and apparently top hunters were using this over 16 times a dungeon sometimes. That's kinda crazy, but it makes sense because this cooldown is reduced with focus spent, so when I'm just mashing buttons on trash, it will recharge pretty fast. This is pretty crucial since hunters are so squishy, so basically any AoE damage results in me dying. You can definitely do research on stuff like this yourself, but to me, the beauty about courses like this is that it saves me time so that I can run more dungeons. Instead of booting up Warcraft logs, looking for top 100 players, looking at their cast, and as a noob trying to compare their cast to my own, I could just be told by some of the best players in the game what to do and what not to do, and use my extra time to actually play the game. Over the next few days as I was climbing keys, going from 5s to 7s, eventually new mechanics started to get introduced. There's these incorporeals that spawn. I didn't notice what they were. I thought they were literally just a boss mechanic. I'm actually really impressed by how helpful the WoW community can be though, because my group was pretty patient about it. They actually told me I can frost trap these when they come out, which honestly felt really cool. Like they really had no business making this trap animation look so sick. Someone on the Blizzard team at some point really said, we gotta make that trap animation cooler. And honestly, hats off to them. I actually picked up this mechanic really quickly. I think mostly because I'm a range class. One of the skill cap videos told me to zoom out my screen a bunch so that I could see things around me. So basically whenever the incorporeals would spawn, I could just place my trap right below their spawn location. On some fights, this really sucks because mobs, or in Eridicron's case, the boss, will just eat the traps. But for the most part, this worked pretty well. I have heard that hunters aren't exactly the best class though, and I'm kinda seeing some of their pitfalls. It does feel like classes that can just target the mob and CC it would be far better than having to rely on them being isolated like this. But still I'm making it work, at least right now. We'll see if this becomes a bigger issue later on though. I worked my way up the keys doing a bunch of 13s and 14s. Eventually, I built my key up to a 15 Galakrond. I was pretty nervous, but honestly, I had done everything up to this point, so it didn't really make sense for me to keep doing 13s. I figured I might as well just dive in. Past the 14, I know that a new affix gets added, so now not only will we have to worry about incorporals, we'll also have to worry about sanguine pools spawning below our enemies when they die. These pools will not only heal the enemies, but they will also damage my allies standing in them. Honestly, this is kind of lucky for me first week because I don't have to deal with these things as much since they spawn under the mobs and I'm a ranged class, but it definitely ramps up the difficulty a bit more. I've been told past 15 is when things start getting a bit more difficult, so jumping into this, I wasn't quite sure how this would go. If I'm able to finish a 15 though, I'll get the Keystone Master achievement for just completing a 15 key. This is one of my steps on the way to becoming a Keystone Hero. I've already failed on time once in Galakron's Fall though, and that was on a 7 key. This dungeon has a couple of difficult parts to get through that can easily dismantle a group. The first of which is the second boss, whose mechanics are a bit confusing. 
We'll talk about that more later, but this is where most of our deaths occurred in the first run. What really did us in though is how the final boss works. In this fight, you really need to protect Chromie. We need to keep her alive by healing her and standing on top of her during key abilities so that we can share some of the damage. If we don't all stack up though, or we don't heal Chromie, she dies. And if she dies, the boss will instantly kill us all. It's kind of the difficulty in this fight, because if I can't keep myself alive, I certainly can't keep her alive. This is where most of my groups have struggled, because even though the fight itself isn't that difficult, if just one person doesn't know what they're doing, it could instantly wipe the group. There's actually a whole guide on Skill Capture channel that covers this place in depth, so I made sure to watch that beforehand, and it taught me basically how all of the mechanics work. Doing it on a 15 is going to be significantly more difficult than the 7 I failed, so this definitely isn't going to be easy. But I've built up to this slowly so far, so there's no reason to really shy away now. As the doors opened and all the mobs were revealed to us, I prepared for our tank to make a massive pull like I saw during my first run of this place. But in this case, he didn't. He just pulled the first three mobs very slowly. Since these dungeons are timed, it felt really weird to see, and I immediately was a bit concerned about how this would go. Normally at the start of the dungeon, you'll see the tank group up a ton of enemies, and your team will pop their offensive cooldowns, oftentimes even bloodlust, and burst everything down at the start of the run. I was really confused at first, but then he did something that absolutely blew my mind. Our tank called for our rogue to use Shroud of Concealment, and we just dealt right past the mobs. Normally there's a certain amount of enemies that you need to kill in the dungeon to actually complete it, but for this specific dungeon, the mob count is way higher than you need for 100% completion. Being able to skip right past these guys saves us a ton of time, which judging by my last attempt, we definitely are going to need. We progressed over towards the first boss, and I started out with a slightly scuffed opener due to cooldowns. I used my Barb Shot into Bestial Wrath, Barb Shot again, Death Chakram, Kill Command while I was waiting for my third Barb Shot to refresh, and then securing my third stack of Frenzy, I popped Call of the Wild in my Trinket. I'm not sure if this was the best opener, but from what I learned, it seems like my number one priority on single targets should be to get my frenzy stacks up as fast as possible, so that's basically my main goal with this opener. There's a couple fights like this one during the season where you'll get this debuff and you want to drop it off towards the outer ring of the arena and try to conserve space. I kind of mucked this up the first time, but you'll notice the second time I did this, I was able to save as much space as possible. Oh, and you also want to not stand in whatever our rogue did that got him one shot. From this point, the fight was pretty easy though. I just maintained Frenzy stacks and spam Kill Command on cooldown. We were able to get this boss down and I actually was able to top damage, which really doesn't matter all that much, but it always feels good. Moving into the next room, we've got to clear all of this trash around the boss before he spawns. I'm pretty glad I did my research before this run because like I said before, it's easy to get lost in these dungeons if you don't really know what you're doing. On a lot of these fights, even if one player messes up, it can actually get other members in the group killed. And that's actually what you see happens in this attempt. This boss has four zones that rotate around him that kind of look like pizza slices. One of them will slow the boss's mechanics, and the other one will speed them up. You'll notice you'll want to be in the slow field to evade the projectile orbs that she sends out, but then, when you get the mark, you want to step into the faster area to get dispelled. You do this because it sends out a ring that will do damage to players inside of it, and if you're in the slow field, it'll do multiple ticks of damage. And, uh, don't move like I did here. You'll notice when it goes fast, it just hits players once, and then it's gone. Two players will get this mark, so generally you'll want to dispel one player first, top people up, and then dispel the other player. This is also a good time to use defensives if you have them. However, when it's dispelled in the slow field, it will slowly cover the battlefield, resulting in players taking multiple ticks of damage, more than likely getting them killed. You'll see this is exactly the thing that ends up killing me. I probably could have saved myself if I disengaged better, but this isn't really something that should be happening during the fight anyway. Luckily, our tank was a Giga Chad and basically sold the boss for 10%, but it's chaotic fights like this that a little bit of research definitely goes a long way. Our tank also was sure to let me know that I was an idiot for running with the current. Another stupid thing that I was doing was running around the outside of the circle, so I had like double the circumference to cover. Anyway, we are still learning. As we progressed and entered the ice tunnel though, I started to finally experience something that I've been warned about, and that's the hunter's lack of survivability. I've heard people mention that hunters are kind of squishy, and I don't have a ton of tools to survive during Mythic Plus. I didn't really feel it until we pulled both of these dragons at once, and I died again and again and again. I felt like I was doing literally everything I could to survive these mobs, but I have no idea what I'm supposed to do in this situation. Do I just stay dead? Do I try to keep running back in? Every time I die, we lose 5 seconds. It didn't even feel like it was worth it for me to be there for the small amount of damage that I did. You'll notice that we lost nearly 2 whole minutes on this pull alone due to all the deaths. Luckily, the next two pulls were a bit easier, but like, man, I felt like I was pressing all of my buttons and it just wasn't enough. Moving on to the third boss, we were able to get this guy down pretty easily, but as the fight went on, the timer on our dungeon started to get lower and lower. After a few more trash pulls, 
and another shroud we were able to make it to the final boss with 12 minutes left but as you guys know this was where my last run got ruined so while we still had 12 minutes to work with that could easily run out in just two to three wipes but that wouldn't happen with these giga chads right the legendary shroud of concealment solo kill god squad right We went from 12 minutes to kill this boss down to just 3 minutes. People just won't stack up for chromie damage, so she keeps dying. The mechanic really isn't that hard. You just stand on chromie when she gets targeted by the barrage, but if one player isn't paying attention, we literally just all die. What's even more annoying is that even if we do it right, if our healer doesn't heal chromie afterwards, she's just going to die anyway. And since I'm playing a hunter, I have no way to heal chromie myself, so I'm kind of just at the mercy of my teammates. We only have three minutes left, so if we die this time, we won't be able to get back in time to beat the timer. This was our last chance. The only thing that we have going for us is that we have lust this goal. So it is still possible, but we need to protect chromie. On our very last attempt, we were able to get this boss down, just barely beating the timer and securing myself the achievement of Keystone Master. Woo. Let's go, dude. Oh man, that was tough. That was a tough one. This achievement is kind of misleading. Technically, Keystone Master is obtained at 2000 rating for the season, but the achievement is obtained by doing a 15 key, which I've been told are not the same thing. As you can see, my rating is only at 1300 right now, but I have proven myself that I'm capable of doing 15s at least, so I'm making good progress and I'm proud of what I've done in the first few days. As the week wrapped up, my goal was to get all of these dungeons done on a 15 or 16 key, just so I could lock myself in for a really solid week two. I ended the week at 1600 rating, which put me in a good place to hit Keystone Master in week two. Something you need to know about Mythic Plus is that each week has different affixes that impact the dungeons. There are two specific affixes that impact your rating as well though, that's Tyrannical and Fortified. One of these makes the trash stronger in the dungeon, and the other one makes the bosses stronger. Basically, your rating will be determined by taking the highest key that you've done for the season in both Tyrannical and Fortified. So since I won't be able to improve my Fortified rating for another week, I wanted to get it as high as possible so that moving into Tyrannical week, I was in a good spot to hit 2000 rating. Since my rating will increase with every new dungeon that I did on Tyrannical this week, basically my goal was just to do all of the dungeons first. It's basically just free rating, since you don't even have to push higher keys right away to boost your IO. I started out the week by just clearing every dungeon on around a 13 or 14. Once again, this put me as kind of an expert in these runs. For example, here is a run I ended up in for a Throne of Tides 13. I was running this dungeon at 4am and honestly, it still makes me laugh. It was just a guild of friends, whose guild name is not appropriate to say in this video, that invited me to join their discord. These guys were just straight chilling. That's a physical impossibility that you gain brain cells while playing with this. Yeah, if it's more likely you cells. lost brain cells. <laughs> Say, aren't you sure you just lost them and you're just thinking you gained them? You're in euphoria from losing them. I think if this run could go one of two ways. We just absolutely shred through the dungeon with no issue at all, or we were going to be here for a while. Turns out we were going to be here for a while. With how difficult this dungeon was though, I gotta say this is definitely the way to play the game. When you're in Discord, you can communicate plans and help each other out a lot more easily. It's also just a lot more fun. Use the oozes again. Let's try to turn around and knock these back if you can. And then uh, we're gonna have to move boss probably over here. Cause you're gonna be covered in ooze in a sec. Probably pop a defensive. Yep, I'm there, thanks. For the most part, with this challenge, I tried not to do keys with my friends that I hadn't already done alone. But the higher keys that I got, the more it just felt silly. WoW is a social game. You're meant to play it with people. If you're feeling left out in the game and want to push higher keys, I can't stress enough how much I recommend finding a guild to play with. Personally myself, I have a large group of friends from Classic WoW that convinced me to try retail, and playing with them is far more enjoyable than just spamming keys alone. There's another reason why finding a group to play with though is super nice, and that has to do with something that I've heard many people complain about on Reddit, and that's gatekeeping. As I progressed through Tyrannical Week, I started to notice that it was becoming increasingly more annoying to get into groups. I'm sure everyone has queued solo and felt this. Sometimes it would take me up to 10 minutes just to join a dungeon and disband after we wipe on the first boss. It's incredibly annoying too because you're getting gatekept by players that you're probably better than. There's two solutions that I've heard for gatekeeping that I wanted to recommend here, but stick around for week three because I came up with a third solution for gatekeeping that made finding groups infinitely easier. The first two solutions are simple though. Queuing in groups eliminates gatekeeping almost entirely. If you have a group of friends or guildies and you're pulling your weight, not only will they run with you, they will be glad to run with you so they don't have to take a random. You guys can build up your own routes and strats for each dungeon and experience the game the way that it's meant to be played, together. 
You also can dodge potentially bad experiences this way, where you get harassed by a group of three people for 30 minutes for literally no reason. I definitely noticed for me that week two involved a lot more bickering than normal, and playing with friends removes at least most of this. If you don't have friends to play with though, you can always create your own groups doing your own keys. This worked really well for me when I was feeling up for it. When you're the group lead, you can play however you like, and now you are the one who gets to gatekeep. Anyway, by abusing the additional rating that I was able to get from Tyrannical Week, you'll see I was eventually able to secure the rank of Keystone Master. I still had 500 rating to go though, and with all of my dungeons completed on Tyrannical, there wasn't really going to be any more free rating for me to obtain. I'd have to work for everything from this point. As I wrapped up Tyrannical Week once again, trying to get the highest rating that I could in each dungeon, I started to encounter gatekeeping more and more, and since I was trying to avoid the first option of grouping with my friends, that really only left me with the option to do my own keys. And this kinda sucks for climbing, because normally if your goal is to gain rating, you want to target the dungeons that you currently have the lowest score on. If I have an 18 Galacron's Fall, doing a 19 isn't going to boost my rating much. But if I have a 13 Throne of Tides, doing a 19 of that will give me a lot more rating. On top of that, I'm new to Mythic Plus, so I don't even know what to look for when I'm starting a group. For example, this healer I got left because one of our DPS was weaker than expected. Now, something tells me this guy was genuinely just a loser, but it still makes me wonder if there was a way I could have known that this group was bad and it would have problems beforehand. That's why when I was finishing up week 2, I started to realize I had to adapt my approach. I had already done all of these dungeons on 15s and Fortified, so if I wasn't able to get into groups any higher than that, there's just no way I'd be able to increase my rating. On top of that, I needed to find good groups. The groups that I was getting in 15s just weren't cutting it, and we continued to struggle on the same things. As I queued for dungeons over and over, not getting any invites, this started to get more and more annoying. I really only had a couple of weeks to complete this challenge, and if I wasn't able to get into any groups, it was going to become very difficult for me to wrap this up before I had to catch a flight home for the holidays. That's when I came across a group of players listed in Group Finder who gave me an idea. Two words. 3000 main. They're trying to let players know that they can trust their low item level in rating, because their main characters are really high rated. The thing is though, I don't know if there's actually a way that you can confirm this, but for some reason just seeing the 3000 main message made me feel a little bit intimidated. It made me think, oh no, I'm not good enough for that party. It was at that moment, that feeling that made me realize this was the perfect strategy to combat gatekeeping. I started signing up for every single group telling them I was 3000 rated on my main character. I'm not 3000 rated, I hardly even know what I'm doing, but they don't know that. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know I'm doing it really, really well. And what's going to happen if I mess up or don't do enough damage? Are they going to kick me and brick their own key? I doubt it. This strategy didn't get me instantly invited to every single group, and my goodness did I feel pretentious. Like, oh look at me, I'm 3000. But it definitely got me invited to groups much faster. Rather than spending 10 to 15 minutes waiting for people to give me a chance, it would take like 2 to 3 minutes to get invited, officially making me climb much easier. Not all of these runs were perfect, but rarely was I the one getting blamed, which definitely was reassuring. On that topic, I did kind of want to talk about this 19 Everbloom that I was running. Our tank in this dungeon was pulling super slow, and it started to annoy everyone in our group. Rightfully so as well, he was pulling too slow and we probably wouldn't have timed it at this pace. But I feel like they just turned up the jets too fast on this guy. They started screaming at him and just being really rude, and he ended up leaving the dungeon because of it. I saw this stuff all the time in Valorant as well, and just as a bystander of this interaction, it was really frustrating because I was just caught in the crossfire. I didn't say anything to this guy, but now my whole run was screwed because these guys just couldn't be constructive with their feedback. We could have finished the run faster, got on loot, and even gained a little bit of rating, but instead, they just harassed this guy. I'm not saying that he's right for leaving or that they're wrong for asking him to pull faster, but I mean, just a little bit of respect and empathy can go a long way. Finally though, as I slowly climbed up, I arrived at 2,490 rating. At this point, I had only ever completed a 15 Throne of Tides, so this was the best dungeon for me to finish my climb. I got myself into an 18 Throne of the Tides, and as long as we were able to time it, I was pretty sure I'd gained the 10 rating that I needed. As the barriers came down, we ran into the dungeon, and I started applying everything that I had learned from Skillcapped. At this point, I had realized how often I really should be using my cooldowns on trash. I've definitely gotten used to the spacing between bosses, and figured out how I can space my cooldowns on trash while still having them available for boss fights. For this particular instance, there aren't really any bosses in the first like 8 minutes of the dungeon, so you can just open up by lusting and blowing all of your cooldowns. Because of this, you'll notice on most of these pulls, I'm able to top damage even over our Demon Hunter in the group. You'll also see that I'm panicking to put spells on my bar because my macros got all messed up before the dungeon due to a DC. Basically, I had set up a macro to allow me to place traps instantly at my mouse cursor, so that way I don't have to click every time I want to place a trap for Spiteful. These proved to be super helpful in other dungeons, and I'm kind of annoyed that I didn't have those here. Once we got to the boss though, I started applying other things that I had learned from Skillcapped, such as pre-activating my Beast Cleave before add spawn so that I could instantly start spamming Kill Command without having to use a GCD. 
This let me handedly pull ahead and top the damage meters in this first encounter. Moving through the rest of the dungeon, we were able to execute perfectly on the second and third boss. Making our way to the final boss, we had a little bit of trouble. A lot of people don't realize that a debuff gets applied when these small adds die around the elementals. It increases the shadow damage that you take by a ton, so that when they cast Swell, you will basically die. Our tank decided to roll into the two final elementals while we had 12 stacks of the debuff, and it basically wiped the whole group. Just a small hiccup, but all we have to do now is kill the final boss, and... Oh god, not again. Alright, all we have to do is kill the final boss now. And we did it. Keystone noob to Keystone hero in just a little bit over two weeks. Overall, this felt really good. And I know that some of the things that I did in this video, such as playing as much as I did, maybe just won't work for everyone. But I gotta say that using skill cap definitely made this infinitely easier for me as I knew exactly all of the things I needed to do to min-max my class to the best of its ability. Learning from experts like this so that you can avoid all of the common mistakes that new players make just saves you a ton of time in the long run. That is time that you could spend actually gaining rating. What's even better is that Skillcap offers a 500 rating guarantee, meaning that if you don't gain 500 rating while using their site, you'll get your money back, no questions asked. For me, this is a no-brainer purchase for anyone looking to climb a Mythic Plus, especially if you're looking to learn multiple classes. On top of this, you can gain access to all of their world-class PvP courses so that you can gain double value in Solo Shuffle as well. Anyway, that's going to do it for me today. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel down below. It will help the WoW guys know that you'd like to see more of me on the channel. And other than that, thank you all for watching.